This is my homemade electric bike. More specifically, this is the version 3 model of my electric bike. If you subscribe to me, you may have seen my version 1 model and my version 2 model, uh, which are all built on this same exact bike frame, uh, just slightly different electronic configurations. Now, ever since I built this battery pack and switched to the VESC 6, the speed controller, uh, which I got from Tramper Boards, link will be down in the description below, uh, I haven't had any issues. In fact, this bike setup with these electronics has done over 400 miles uh, just on the version 3 model. So if you've watched my video on the DIY electric bike version 1, you'll know that I used this exact same bike. Uh, it's a single speed uh, fixie style bike that I bought from Amazon for about £160. And it served me pretty well. Uh, I just said that I've done 400 miles on this electronics configuration. But since the version 1, I've probably done over 1,000 miles on this cheap bike. Uh, which is pretty impressive for a bike of £160. Now there are a few issues with this bike, uh, the main one being the brakes. Having V-brakes or rim brakes uh, on a pedal bike that can do 36 to 38 miles per hour, depending on the battery uh, charge, uh, just doesn't work very well. The brake pads wear out in about two weeks if I'm riding it every day. Uh, just slamming on the brakes at 38 miles an hour, you know, stopping down to zero, and doing that constantly, you know, if I'm riding it on nice country roads, it's, uh, yeah, the brake pads don't last very long. Another issue is uh, the bike doesn't have any suspension. So around where I live, there's quite a lot of potholes and it's not, you know, good to swerve out into the road to miss potholes. So a lot of the time I have to go over the potholes. And um, obviously that's quite rattly on myself, but I have actually exploded a rear tire by hitting a pothole at one time. So um, that's a bit frustrating and it'd be quite nice to have some suspension on the bike. Now you may be wondering how the 3D printed parts have held up over time. Uh, quite a few people have asked me on my previous videos, you know, a few months on how are the 3D printed parts holding up. Uh, the previous pulley was 3D printed in PLA plastic from my sponsor, 3D Prints UK. Uh, link will be down to their filament in the description below. Uh, the PLA actually worked really well until it was about minus two one day in the winter and I rode off of a, a curb, a pavement, uh, just a small drop and the PLA was obviously cold and it was brittle and it cracked. So I decided to 3D print it out of PETG, again from my 3D printer filament sponsor uh, and it has held up so far. Uh, it, I've probably done a good 200 miles on this single pulley and uh, no issues at all. Now you might be wondering why I'm holding the electric motor in my hand and it's not mounted on the bike like it should be. Well, I had one of the main bearings inside of the motor fail on me and being quite a relatively low quality motor, uh, I was trying to undo the bolts to take the motor apart and replace the bearing. However, the bolts just stripped and I wasn't able to get the motor apart. So as a last ditch effort, I decided to drip some oil down inside and try to lubricate the bearing. Now what this did uh, was actually dripped the oil onto the frame as well, uh, which caused the motor mount uh, to slip on the frame tube. So to prevent the motor from slipping on the frame and potentially going into the spokes of the wheel, I tightened up the motor bolts a lot. And what this did was crush the 3D printed uh, plastic adapter that attached it to the side of the frame. Uh, so essentially I wrecked the whole motor mount by lubricating the frame. Now for the reasons as I've already mentioned, for example, the V-brakes uh, being quite you know, bad at stopping as well as wearing out very quick, uh, also having the thin tires and no suspension, I've decided to buy a new bike. So let's get this bike out of the way. So this is going to be the electric bike version four. Now, aside from looking pretty good with the nice orange spray paint matching my hair color, uh, it's actually a pretty decent bike. The reason why I got it is it was on sale at Halfords for 130 pounds discount over the regular retail price. And um, I saw quite a, good quite a few good reviews online. So I decided to go for it. It's got nice front suspension, a uh, nice big 29 inch uh, wheels with quite wide tyres. The most important, it's got disc brakes front and rear. But there's a few other reasons why I bought it, not just for the, you know, the fancy disc brakes and the suspension, but also a few engineering reasons. On the version 3 model of the electric bike, the previous frame, 
I mounted the motor on the side of the rear fork thing right here. And that worked pretty well, it was nice and simple. The only issue is that with it hanging out the side, you could only lean the bike down on one side because you're scared of breaking the motor. Now with this bike, uh, because it doesn't have a V-brake, has the disc brake, I can quite easily mount the motor behind the seat post right here and in front of the wheel. So that's what I want to do. I want to try and mount it behind the seat post there. The only issue I need to overcome is trying to get the pulley onto the wheel uh, without interfering with the disc brake and the caliper. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to model the rear part of this bike in Fusion 360 and see if I can design up a mount for this motor. Let's go. To model the rear of the frame, I took a few photos at various different angles, making sure that both the bike and the camera were level. I then imported the photos into Fusion 360 and aligned the photos using the rear axle as a reference point, as well as using the wheel diameter as a reference scale. Using the form feature in Fusion 360, I modelled the curve and the angle of the rear section of the frame. I then imported a model of a 29 inch wheel, which I got from grabcad.com, to see how well it was scaled. As I mentioned earlier, I want to mount the motor behind the seat post as the section of this bike is unobstructed by any rim brakes or cables. The only issue is that the belt can't run directly down to the wheel pulley because the frame gets in the way. So I need to add an idler pulley to keep the belt up and out of the way of the frame. These plates will eventually be CNC cut from aluminium, which will allow the use of a support bearing for the motor shaft to prevent the motor bearings wearing out again. As well as that, it will also act as a big heatsink for keeping the motor cool. The next tricky part was designing the wheel pulley as it has to avoid the disc brake and caliper. Fortunately, this frame with the 29 inch wheels allow for quite a bit of space to fit an aluminium center spoke section which can be fixed to the disc brake and be bent around the caliper. I will then either 3D print or CNC machine the pulley tooth profile, depending on cost. Because this design doesn't allow for motor mount adjustments, a belt tensioner will be needed. This will be mounted pretty close to the motor pulley to help engage as many teeth as possible and will be sprung loaded using a torsion spring. Using a 12 tooth motor pulley and a 220 tooth wheel pulley, it will have a pulley ratio of about 18.3 to one which is slightly higher than the version 3 e-bike at 15.3 to 1. But as this bike has slightly larger diameter tyres, it should still be able to go about 34 miles per hour and have plenty of torque for wheelies. I decided to CNC cut the prototype parts from wood instead of 3D printing them to test how the cam portion of Fusion 360 would handle the design using the 3mm and 6mm cutting bits that I have. I then crudely tapped the threads into the parts using a bolt, which worked okay, but I'll obviously use a proper thread tapping kit when I move to aluminium. I then 3D printed the blocks which will clamp to the frame, uh, which will most likely be 3D printed in the final version using a high infill percentage, uh, which I'm not too worried about these parts being crushed as the aluminium plates either side will spread the load. The motor was then mounted with some minor adjustments needed to the bolt pattern. The motor originally came with this mount bracket, so this motor mount will completely remove the need for it. I just need to figure out where the wires will go. With the motor pulley mounted, it was time to mount the support plate. In the final version, there will be large diameter tubes which go round these bolts and act as spaces between the two aluminium plates. This will be to add rigidity, but for now I just need to test the alignment. And I probably should have pressed the support bearing in earlier, but the motor shaft needs pushing through a bit further. Uh, before that can be of any use. This design provides a lot of clearance from any legs or feet coming in contact with any moving parts and the motor is well protected, though I'll probably still be adding a small mud guard to protect it from any wheel debris. So that's the motor mount prototyping done, it just needs a pulley and it'll be good. So that's the end of this week's video, I've finished prototyping the motor mount. Uh, I'm pretty happy with the design, uh, could probably do with a few minor modifications. For example, the motor mount pattern is slightly off. Um, and also I just need to, you know, modify the designs of where these holes go so that everything fits in perfectly. Also need to figure out where the motor wires are going to go through the frame. I would have liked to finish off more of the prototyping, for example, the pulley, uh, but I'm not sure exactly how I can prototype that without cutting it from aluminium um, because I can't easily bend uh, the wood and also my 3D printer isn't big enough to uh, print it as a sheet and then fold the edges around the disc brake at the back here. This project is going to be quite long term. Uh, I'm not going to be doing it over you know, two, three weeks. 
Uh, I want to make sure that this is all done as well as possible because this will most likely be the last version electric bike that I make, at least for quite a while, maybe a few more months. Uh, no, I'd, I'd really like this one to be the electric bike that I stick with. You may be wondering why I don't go with a mid-drive system where the electric motor actually drives the main chain which you pedal. Uh, the reason why I'm not going for that is just complexity really. Um, I don't really want to have to mess around with uh, you know, different chains and everything. I'm, I'm not sure if this stock chain would take the amount of torque that this motor produces. Uh, and the actual belt system that I used to run was pretty reliable. Uh, the belts lasted forever. Um, the other thing I was wondering is that with a freewheel system uh, where the back wheel can spin without resistance from the motor, uh, I'm not sure how that would work in terms of if I went full throttle with the motor, it would spin up to full RPM. And then obviously when it hits the same RPM as the wheel, or at least the relative RPM uh, through the gear system, it would suddenly stop as it hits the freewheel stop and this might cause a surge in voltage or current. Uh, I'm not really sure, and I don't really want to mess around with that, whether that would you know, break the electronics, the speed controller, etc. I can probably get around that problem by either having a centrifugal clutch or maybe even having like a slow start on the motor so that it slowly ramps up rather than just going to full throttle. Uh, but I just, I don't really want to mess around with that. Most of the time I ride this uh, with the throttle on, so I, yeah, there's not really much need in a freewheel. And also with the freewheel mechanism, uh, I can't use regenerative braking. Uh, as you may have seen my previous regenerative braking video I did a few months back, uh, it's not the most helpful thing in the world. It only increases the range by about 5%, but um, still it's quite nice to have if you've got a long uh, hill to ride down. It's, you know, just gain a few more uh, watt hours of energy. You may also be wondering why I'm not running chains and sprockets uh, as the drive mechanism rather than uh, belts and pulleys. Uh, the main reason is I actually have the exact size belt uh, for this system already, which I bought as a test prototyping system for one of the version two electric bikes. Uh, so it means I don't have to buy a new belt and I've also got the correct motor pulley. So I don't have to buy a new pulley for the motor. If I didn't have the pulleys and belts already, I could quite easily switch to chains and sprockets. The only other issue is that there is a minimum size uh, sprocket you can use of a chain uh, and this happens to be about 13 tooth for a bike chain of this spec and it would mean if I do the right gear calculations it would mean using a 520 millimeter diameter rear sprocket which on a 620 millimeter wheel would be pretty huge and probably come in contact with the frame and just cause other issues. So using belts, I can just get away with a much smaller pulley on the drive motor. I have considered making a gearbox on the rear here uh, using uh, planetary gears uh, and using, if you use a two stage planetary gear system, you can actually add in a clutch to shift uh, the gear ratio, uh, basically make a two speed transmission, uh, which I've really been considering. Uh, it would be quite complex to build um, but it's definitely possible. Uh, the reason why I'm choosing not to go with it though is mainly just simplicity. Uh, you know, this system should be able to do about 34 miles per hour and it will be able to accelerate to that speed in 10-15 seconds, which is more than enough torque. Uh, the old system used to be able to go up uh, really steep gradient hills. Um, I'm not sure on exact values, but you know, hills probably about that steep. It used to be able to climb hills that steep at about 38 miles an hour. So this will have no problem at 34 miles per hour. Um, so torque isn't an issue. And, you know, I don't really ride much faster than 30 miles an hour on average because that's getting into, you know, motorbike speeds. So that's basically it. I just want to keep this system as simple as possible, but just improve on the motor mount, you know, not have it mounted on the side here, being a hassle for whether you kick it with your foot or if you put the bike down, you know, it can get damaged. So moving it up behind these seat posts and in front of the wheel just makes things a bit more neater. And um, yeah, I'm hoping that this system will work pretty well. So I'd like to thank you very much for watching. If you're new to my channel, please click subscribe down below. And if you enjoyed this video, leave a thumbs up. Uh, I'm not sure when the next part of this project will be. It'll probably be a couple of weeks. I have a few more projects lined up um, and I'm waiting on parts for this. 
So yeah, thanks once again for watching. A huge, huge thanks to all of my patrons for supporting me. You guys make these weekly videos possible. And also, I appreciate a lot of your guys' feedback uh, when I posted the design to this uh, bike. Uh, some of your guys' feedback about the different suggestions uh, was really helpful, so thanks for that. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Thanks once again for watching, and I'll see you next week. Goodbye.